Our guy, the soon-to-be NFL Coach of the Year, and my black coffee brother, the great Mike McCarthy. <laughs> Good morning, Sean and RJ. My goodness, you guys are must be a slow news day with that introduction. What? what? <laughs> it was. Did you watch last night's game? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. I had it on. Didn't watch much of it. Much of it so you didn't miss anything. But yeah, was it? Would it end up 12-9? 12 twelve nine? Twelve nine. Coach, why is scoring down this year? I think there's like a five-point-per-game difference. Have you looked into that whatsoever? Do you have any theories you know, in this world of offense on why scoring is down this season about five weeks in? Yeah, definitely. I, I think um, like a lot of things, you have trends going on in the National Football League. I mean, if you go back and look at the pandemic year, just in mm-hmm. weeks one through four, the amount of games over, over um, uh, is it 500 yards? You know, compared to like in the maybe 50s, and then now it's like 14. So I, I think you got a couple of things. I thought the pandemic year was you had a lot of um, different, uh, you know, training um, factors that were involved. You know, so my point is that the, the teams in September, some were clearly way ahead of others, um, more, more so than I think I've ever experienced. And, and unfortunately, we were on the wrong side of that in 2020. But um, then you look at how the numbers have you know, kind of balanced out last year. And then I think really getting back to having a full off season, mm-hmm. uh, I think what defenses are doing um, on first and second down is really reflects, frankly, what what has gone on the last 20 years on offense. Like they're giving you so many more different personnel groups and more variations. So I always refer to certain situations when you clearly understand where the defense is playing your upfield shoulder. Uh, you're able to get some free offense, you know, some, you know, uh, Easy, easier plays that, that, that really don't exist, um, easier opportunities that don't exist as much in today's game. So I think there's a number of factors involved, but the numbers clearly speak for mm-hmm. themselves. And I, I, I'm sure that's, that's what you're referring to, right? Because uh, yeah. the numbers from 2020 to 2022, just in September football, are, are really out of whack. Yeah, and I noticed that, like, pass plays are at a 10-year low from efficiency. And I just I, – I wonder, and you brought it up, it's like maybe defenses are doing something different or – our offense is shifting more towards a running game on early downs. I mean, is that going on too? I think the biggest hole in, in this whole offseason program and the relationship, you know, that goes on with, with the, you know, with the, with the league and the union on trying to get the offseason training, um, you know, get it right. Uh, and is, is the fact of the matter is uh, these offensive linemen are, are at a, a severe, not just a disadvantage, severe training disadvantage compared to the other positions uh, mm. in the game of football. Um, you know, the fact that they can't really even truly train in their, you know, environment that they actually make a living at until the second week of training camp yeah. is, you know, it's a factor. Uh, you can't deny it. I mean, the, you know, the pass rush is ahead, of, is ahead of the pass protection, which obviously equates clearly to the numbers that you, you, you've already presented. So um, that's where I see the biggest challenge in training, you know, mm. getting your football team trained is, is – is the offensive lineman, um, you know, they, there, there has to be a better way to give these men an opportunities. And I'm talking, I'm really talking about your young players, which mm-hmm. obviously makes up 80% of the league. But we, we, we got to find a way to get these guys, uh, the offensive lineman, an opportunity for more training, in my opinion. Coach, how about the rest of your guys in the preseason? Like, you know, kind of your first teamers not playing in games so much, or have those team scrimmages that everyone sets up, does that make up for that? Does that contribute to a slower start to the season with lack of first-team preseason action? I think you make an excellent point in theory, but I, you know, but I disagree with it just based on the mathematics. And what I'm talking about, I think we've talked about this coming out of training camp. The, the fact of the matter is, you know, the number of reps that the first group had against, uh, you know, other football teams. Now, granted, we did two practice. You know, two, we practiced with two teams, so we were able to get three full seventy, you know, plus play practices. Shoot, the one was ninety um, against another opponent. So, actually, in my experience of being a head coach, our number ones actually had more competitive reps mm. uh, than they would in a, in a normal or you know former uh, preseason format where you, you you played three games or four games. So that that's the part I liked about it because the the quantity of work was was significantly more, but it was in a safer you know less risk 
environment mm-hmm. of a practice structure. So, yeah. I mean, that's the reality of, of the mathematics, and I can see why people have always done it. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I will not do two teams again. I, I thought the travel, and, you know, was a bit much for us. Um, you know, in hindsight, uh, but there, there's definitely merit to go that way because uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, you want to start the season as healthy as possible, and I think we all give up, you know, the risk of health, you know, and, and, and play to that over, you know, trying to get more production or more competitive reps against, you know, against an opponent in a preseason game or even in a, in a you know, in the competitive practice structure. So, yeah, so I, I you know, the numbers don't. Master theory, but I got you know I clearly understand why you said you know why you look at it that way. Mike McCarthy joining us here, one hundred five through the fan, brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee Company, official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. Does does it seem to you that the Thursday night football is is bad football? Like, do you find that it's more difficult to put a really sound game together? Um, I mean, it's a challenge. I mean, sure, sure, weeks are challenges. I mean, you know, Monday night on the road is is is, is probably the toughest. Um, in 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 my opinion, going into the short week, because because you, you know you got you wait you know there's it's a long preparation week going into it, and then you know then you're you're waiting to be the last game, and then and then boom you turn around and then have to play a game. You know the the Thursday games you, you do have you know obviously um, you know Sunday to Thursday we all know we have at least one a year, so you know I, I, maybe I'm just used to it. Um, because because there's definitely the you know the light at the end of the tunnel moment because you know when you do play on Thursday night you do have a mini buy type you know mm-hmm. you know mindset for your football team and I think that's very helpful you know because so much of this is uh, how you train your team you know being staying on top of the stress and I'm talking about simple as you know how much time are you spending on the plane you know from one year to the next because it because that you know stress is additive it all adds up and it and it does factor in, in your naive to think it doesn't so those are the things that i really look at but uh you know th- thursday night football is a challenge I-, I think it's clearly you know one one of the challenges of, of flipping from a sunday to a thursday um but you know my experience the monday night on the road i mean you know monday night in new york I mean, it was a great win and everything but you get back at 4 30 and um i mean that's 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 a hard week and you're going from one division game to a, to a, to the to another i mean that's you know that's all added you know pressure and that, that goes into the you know into the scheduling process. I mean, boo hoo, coach. Welcome to our life every know, day. Four thirty. Four thirty. Boo hoo. No, I, I mean, hey, I, I get it. You guys are just, I mean, to, to do what you do as early as you do it. <laughs> Sitting big, on our big, ass. Big time respect here. <laughs> were you that surprised <laughs> yesterday to hear that you were an underdog to the Rams in the press conference? I mean, frankly, I, you know, I, I probably shouldn't admit this, but it was a question I wasn't expecting, but uh, I just, I, I just never really given it any thought. So, um, but you know, usually the only time I worry about getting questions that I don't expect is when I come on your show. Right, there you go. You know, I, I, I'm usually a little more relaxed when I go into a, a press conference. But, no, yeah, I, I was, I was surprised by it. Um, I was, you know, I was surprised by the, the number, you know, because, uh, for a minute there, I thought we were favored by five. You know, so I went, mm. that's the way I think of it, right. think of our team. But no, I, I frankly, I've never really looked at it, and and you know, they obviously do a great job. And there's, you know, I, I love the analytics that go into it. You know, I do respect the the mathematics that you know, the, the length of what people do to come up with that situation. But you know, at the end of the day, we're I'm in it. You know, I'm in the training of the team every day, and you know, we're. We're really focused on improving, which we have a lot of room for, and uh, and I think as we do that, uh, you know, we're confident to to beat anybody on Sunday. Do you believe in the the idea of the Super Bowl hangover? I know it didn't really impact you guys in Green Bay. You went fifteen and one, but <laughs> like uh, in general, like is, is that a, is that a real thing or is that more media fodder? No, it's real. Uh, it's definitely real. Um, and I and I think you know you go back to I can only talk you know specific on my own personal experience, but. You know, I go back to the uh, you know 2010 season. You, you win the Super Bowl, but if you recall, we we went into a lockout. So, you know, a lot of the riding the wave or you know the the pressure and some of those things throughout the off season and even through training camp, you know, really didn't exist. You know, we didn't have to go through that mm-hmm. um, because you know from the day the Super Bowl was won, I, I think the next time we saw each other was at the ring ceremony, and that was you know we had to get permission to do that, and then. 
you know, then finally when the lockout ended, we went to camp. So we we were able to kind of just pick up where we left off in a sense, you know. So, um, I, and I thought that was very helpful to us at that time. Uh, but I, I think when you do win and just the whole, you know, winning is the biggest challenge in this league. You know, handling success has, has always been the biggest challenge. And, was, you know, and I'm talking about it, every level of success. You know, you win three games in a row and then all of a sudden, you know, um, human nature is people want to, you know, take the foot off the gas a little bit, and, yeah. and, you, and you can't do that. And, and now you, you know, just the way you know things are in the, in the off season, you know, the marketing, all that that goes into it. I mean, it's it's just another additive component of you know stress or you know energy and it tapping into your energy source that you have to deal with. So there's 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 definitely uh, some definitely some truth to it, in my opinion. Mike McCarthy here every Friday with Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, I'm asking this connected to Cooper Cup and Aaron Donald, not asking you specifically what you're going to do, but your philosophy in going up against the great player, right? This is for all sports, Coach, particularly basketball. Do you do you let the great player get theirs and minimize everyone else, or do you eliminate them from the game and then hope, count on everyone else beating you? How, how have you approached that throughout your career? Well, it's, it's, it's all about, um, you know, projected risk i mean he's he's a great player that is so disruptive so you have to you know the reality is you're trying to you're trying to take him out of the game you know with the attention that you give him and so forth but you know there's obviously situations um i mean you can't really play it that close to the vest all day long because you know let's not forget what they have on the other side of the ball you know they have the you know they have a all all pro quarterback and you know they, they have they have an excellent offense too so um, you know that 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 goes into your thinking here. So, um, but I, I think the biggest thing is you try to give that player as much you know attention as you possibly can, um, and by doing that, you you try to minim- minimize his his impact on the game. And Aaron Donald is obviously a very disruptive player, and you know it's definitely got our attention. And so that's that's really the reality how you go about it. What do you see from Cup? Cooper Cup in terms of his style, the way his career has gone. And and do you remember anything about what you thought about Cup or Donald coming out of college? Yeah, I think the biggest thing when you look at, I mean, you know, Aaron's just, uh, you know, I mean, he has the skills of a elite pass rusher, you know, as a defensive tackle. So, I mean, I mean he does have the ability to go out and play over, over a tackle at, at the end position and, and be extremely disruptive there. So, I mean, just a super – Talented, physically gifted, you know, and just he just he just has the whole thing. I mean, for for his quick and explosive and his and his I mean the discipline and his hand placement and usage, um, you know, in the phone booth. I, I mean, he's he's a unique unique player. Um, and as far as Cooper, I mean, he you know he he just reminds me of a receiver that plays the position you know from the quarterback platform. I mean, he just. Mm. Um, you, you can see the route running and the connection that he has with Matthew, and just how they're in sync, and you know, and, and they're and they're really maximizing their opportunities to get him the ball too. I mean, there's you know, you, you'd see by formation, and, and and the fact of the matter is, you know, he's he's so involved in the run game, in the run blocking, which opens up so many excellent opportunities in the action pass game. So you know, you talk about a complete receiver. Um, you know, you, you, we're usually talking about guys that can beat, bump, and run, can also go vertical, you know, make the big red zone catch and, you know, all those things from a perimeter perspective. But the fact of the matter, you, you know, this guy can do that, but he also is ingrained in the in the box, you know, run blocking uh, components that, you know, definitely give him an opportunity to be a, a huge we- weapon in the action pass game. So he's uh, he is definitely a challenge to prepare for. All right, Coach, uh, two quick things before we let you go. We heard this locker room audio, and we wanted to get – uh, your version of, of what this meant. Hit it. Pat. All right, hey, you got, frankly, man, you just did exactly what you said you are going to do. Excellent, complimentary football. Outstanding. Zach, what time is it? It's only 3.15! Yeah! Coach, what, why does 3.15 matter? <laughs> well, I mean, you, you guys should respect that. I mean, how, how many days, you know, you guys get up early, and, but you get to go home early, too. But you know, how, how, how many days... In professional football, where you're done at 3:15, so yeah, it's a big true. deal. Yeah. Okay, especially with a win, you know, a win and done at 3:15, that's a great day in this business. <laughs> yeah, and it, and, it, and it also gives you more time to shave. Why have you abandoned us? With, with the, we we are the bearded, unshaven men, and and we feel like I mean, at least I have black coffee with you, but you've abandoned us with the shaving. 
Well, I mean, you always got November, so we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I, there's only one person that uh, that likes it when I don't shave, and that's my mother. So just trying to make Vaughn happy. <laughs> Mike McCarthy, every Friday here on Sean and RJ. Coach, uh, absolute gold as always. Thank you so much for the time, and let's keep that win streak going. Good luck on Sunday. All right. Thank you, gentlemen.